to proclaim it with your women disciples and to rejoice in it with your pure apostles. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever.
for the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaim life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Lord Jesus says, Behold, I am sending you as sheep in the midst, into the midst of wolves. So be prudent as serpents and as simple as doves. But beware of men. They will hand you over to courts, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be led before governors and kings for my sake. And as witnesses before them and before the Gentiles, when they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You shall be hated by all because of my name, but whoever shall endure to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. No disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. So it is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, and for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the household Beelzebub, how much more those of his household? This is the truth. Peace be with you. Praise and blessing to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Equivalent to our Easter fast. 
And then we also following Holy Trinity Sunday. On that Monday, we begin a fast in preparation for the Feast of Saints Peter and Paul. So it varies a few days each year, depending on where Easter falls in the season, but it will always be something of about two to three weeks. And the reason for that is we fast in preparation for the feast of the two great princes of the apostles, Peter and Paul. But it's also that we ourselves become better and better disposed to embrace the grace and light of the gospel, that we ourselves become apostles. So that's why following the feast of Saints Peter and Paul, we have the gospels concerning discipleship. Our Lord calling the apostles, and our Lord sending them out. And of course, what also means is that for us in each generation, this reality is lived. Not that we are apostles like the twelve, but that in each generation we are given to embrace the gospel. And that same turmoil of light and darkness, of accepting of the gospel and the rejection of the gospel, works itself out generation after generation until the end of time. Those who waged this combat before us, those who built this church, those who founded this parish almost 100 years ago, their battle is done, and they have been judged either acceptable or unacceptable. This generation to generation that we go through, our Lord wants us to understand that it is always going to be one of friction, which is why the quotation today begins, Behold, I now send you out as sheep among wolves. The image of sheep is not that we're innocent and fluffy and white. Whenever the sheep are used in the gospel, everybody who is hearing the gospel from our Lord understand precisely that sheep are stupid. Sheep are not brilliant animals. They make great stews, they make a nice Sunday dinner, but they are not brilliant. We have all of our holy cards with the lovely little lambs on the shoulders of our Lord, which of course is a beautiful image. But the image is not about the sheep. The image is about our Lord. And so when our Lord says He's sending us as sheep among the wolves, wolves will always eat a lone sheep. Always. And that's why he says, therefore, you must be wise. You must be awake. You must be attentive. You must be aware of what's going on around you. He calls it prudence. Be astute. And you must also be as simple as doves. Guileless. Without deception. Straightforward. Honest. In the Sermon on the Mount, which is just shortly before this episode in the Gospel of St. Matthew, our Lord says, let your yes be yes, and your no be no. That what your word that you speak means what it means, and does not duplicitous. So that you must be as prudent as serpents, but as innocent, guileless as doves. What is happening here is the fact that the division between what our Lord calls the world, that part of humanity that rejects the gospel, does not embrace the redemption, the world. And those who try to attempt to enter into this work of salvation by embracing the light of the gospel, there will always be a friction between these two. Now historically, Israel was created at Mount Sinai, the law of Moses, through all of the theophany that you know very well, Israel was created for one purpose. And that single purpose was the reception of the Messiah. To receive the Christ. He created the people that he taught and he formed for 15 centuries. So what is taking place in our Lord's lifetime is recorded especially by St. Matthew is whether or not this people of Israel is going to receive the Messiah. Which is why, as I always do, I encourage you to read this whole chapter of St. Matthew. Because the first part of this chapter 10 is our Lord choosing and sending out the apostles, the twelve. And these men go out, there are miracles performed, and the work of preparation for the foundation of the kingdom of God is in place. 
But it's at this verse 16 that everything changes. Because our Lord at this point is talking about the apostolate and the work following his passion. So in chapter 10, we have two things being given to us. Not only our Lord's historical foundation, but how this work is going to continue in generations after his passion. After the moment in which Israel has rejected the Messiah. After this moment in which Israel itself will rise up and put to death the Holy One of God. And of course, in his glorious resurrection, he sends forth the Pentecost as apostles to the work that continues to this day in each one of us. Which is why he says, if they've called the master of the household Beelzebub, it's a demonic name. For the Jews, it signified demons. Beelzebub, it may be a corruption taken from a Uridic pagan god, Baal, just meaning Lord, Prince Lord, Beelzebub. But it's a corruption of a demonic pagan deity. And so therefore, for the Jews, it's a demonic name. When they call our Lord Beelzebub, or when they say that he does his miracles by use of demonic power, they are calling our Lord a black magician, that he uses sorcery. And that's why our quotation ends at this point by saying, if they've called the master of the household Beelzebul, you shall receive the same. So what our Lord is doing in this gospel is to make us understand what it is to carry the light of the gospel in each generation. And as if it wasn't clear already from that point, he gives out the last thing, brother against brother, father against child, children rising up against their parents. This division within households, we all know. Not everyone is a practicing Catholic. Not everyone embraces the gospel. And we ourselves have this division between the world and this kingdom of light that runs right through our hearts. There are moments in our lives in which we embrace the light more, and there are moments in our lives when we tend to wander further away from it. Our Lord is saying that we must understand that this is something of the utmost seriousness. God did not enter into the world to give us just pretty stuff. He entered the world so that mankind may find redemption and be able to arrive at the beatific vision. And so for all of these reasons, this division, what our Lord is pointing out in this Gospel is that the loyalty, the fidelity which is to be paid is to His person. Now if you go back and look at the Gospels from this previous week that we've had during the liturgy, you will see this aspect in which He's continually talking about this difficulty and this friction. But we have the famous quotation also from the Gospel of St. Matthew. That he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. This is a pretty horrible statement if you are not God. But what he is pointing out is this is not a fidelity to a law. This is not a fidelity of the law of Moses of something that we adhere to as an ideal. But this is loyalty to a person of God himself in the flesh. He who loves father, mother, brother, sister more than me is not worthy of me. It's the same gospel of St. Matthew. And it's for all of these reasons of what our Lord wishes us to understand. Is that as disciples, as his disciples, we cannot expect anything from the world which is alienated from him. The same world that rose up to put him to death on Calvary. We cannot expect anything from this world that is alienated. But on the contrary, that world will hound us to death. It is important that as we judge our lives, that we see the gospel as being central and of the most vital importance in our existence. And that everything else, vacations, jobs, everything else is judged secondary to it. Because after all, 
If our Lord should say that anyone who loves father, mother, brother, sister more than me is not worthy of me, with even more reason he could say that those who love their job, their occupation, their hobby, their recreation, their amusements more than me is not worthy of me. He's pointing out that this loyalty is to the person of God incarnate and that we should expect that there will be difficulties in our lives but that we know that the story finishes with the glorious resurrection. And so as we had the gospel last week to St. Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And immediately it was followed by the prophecy of his death, his betrayal. He finished that prophecy by saying, but on the third day, I will rise again from the dead. We know the end of the story. The question is, is how do we live between this day and that moment? And that's why our Lord also says in this gospel today that he who perseveres to the end will be saved. Not a good beginning, not perhaps a nice middle, but he who perseveres thoroughly to the end will be saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
we Lord and God, you accept the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of the love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them in place of their earthly gifts. Grant them life and your kingdom. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, St. Mary, St. Jude, and St. Charlotte. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered. For the repose of boundary joy, amen. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Peace and security, and your true love and divine mercy. 
be with us among us all the days of our lives. We may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Okay. 
and Saint Charbel, assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, Lord. teachers of the true faith, who have endured suffering for the sake of your church and for your people, may we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, hoping to their life-giving voice, Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf, and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. May we rest our heart to the heart, and forgive the sins we have committed, with our powerful knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us in the department, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, it is now, and shall be forever. Purity and sanctity. One, one and only Father, 
while to eat and your living blood to drink, the lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful one, O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Thank you, Lord God and Father. And we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and the glory of your holy name, and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake and by sacrificing yourself you saved us. Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name. For we are your holy people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received in the forgiving altar of the Lord. In the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Oh,